good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Raphael Maré uh, from the University of Liège. I'm there in charge of supervising the development of the Cytomine uh, software at our university. We are part of the Montefiore Institute, which is a computer uh, science and electrical engineering, engineering department. And we are um, in a nice campus in the, the forest on the top of uh, the Liège city. And, uh, Yes, as you all know, is right in the middle of uh, of Europe. Yeah. It's a little bit biased, but uh, it's how some people like to, to describe uh, Yes. So, so um, before going into uh, this presentation, I would like to uh, give you a, a short uh, a story of uh, Cytomine uh, software and uh, ecosystem. So the Cytomine uh, software development actually started uh, in 2010 at the university. Uh, we, we submitted a, a grant to the region, the Walloon region of Belgium, and got uh, money to develop a, a web platform for uh, cytohistopathology image analysis. So that's where it started. Uh, and then after a few years, we uh, released this software as, as an open source, uh, with an open source license which is uh, Apache 2 uh, permissive license, which basically allows you to do everything you want with this software. Uh, you can modify it, uh, but also uh, publish it and uh, make specific version, uh, either in uh, open source or proprietary version. And you, it's not mandatory to, to pay royalties or things like that to, to our teams uh, because it's a permissive license. So after uh, one year, uh, once we released the open source software, we realized that we started to get uh, quite a lot of uh, requests um, from other institutes to, to help them to um, understand the code, uh, etc., and document it. So we created first a not-for-profit cooperative company uh, for, for these uh, matters, code maintenance, documentation, and uh, management of the open source community. And then uh, four years later, we also realized that we got a lot of requests for uh, help with installation or developing very specific modules or uh, providing other type of services like uh, training courses, etc. So Another uh, second company was, was created by uh, uh, my uh, collaborators, which is selling services on top of this open source software. So um, the, 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 the site of mine software is, is still uh, distributed and uh, developed with a permissive license and used by uh, thousands of users. And um, at, at my team at the university, we are mostly working on extending it uh, for new image modalities uh, and working on AI development. While you have these two other entities that can help you um, to, to use it and, and extend it for other purposes. I'm personally linked to the not-for-profit cooperative company. Uh, I'm in the board of director of this uh, cooperative company. But I'm not directly linked to the Cytomine Corporation. So Cytomine is uh, widely known for histology because it was the, the primary purpose of, of, of um, its development uh, to, to work with digital pathology, experimental histology, and cytology. And so it's actually used in many um, institutes and even companies uh, around the world because it's possible to for these entities to install a cytomine server in their own uh, uh, environment and start using it. So we have a lot of people using it. And uh, because we are the day after the French uh, national day, I would like to mention that cytomine is uh, currently somehow invading France uh, because uh, several uh, national initiatives uh, have decided to use cytomine to provide uh, a tool to 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 work on uh, images and histology images like veterinary schools but also um, universities and, uh, and the health data but don't worry uh, we are coming in peace we are nice belgian people and we we will only offer a nice software and nothing else so um i would like also to mention that uh, since uh, last year we are involved in this big picture project 
which um, combine uh, about uh, more than 40 uh, institute or pharmaceutical companies or hospitals with the aim to develop a very big database with millions of digital slides uh, in several um, for several pathologies and cytomine uh, is the, the main tool that is used to visualize annotate and analyze these images so all this is for uh, histology but actually cytomine in my lab uh, is not only meant for histology we have several collaboration and we know several people are using the software in other fields so for example some people have used the platform to annotate digital uh, uh, images in the digi digital humanities field but uh, you see there also examples of um, image and quality control project uh, or uh, in geospatial project so the, the tool was indeed originally developed for histology but for the very beginning we we decided to have a generic uh, design so that we can work with uh, large images from uh, other uh, application field and actually in my lab uh, the main goal uh, that we, we we want to reach in the coming years is to really to make cytomine a multimodal web platform so that teams that are working with uh, multiple uh, imaging equipments and who wants to combine this uh, imaging uh, readouts and um, make analysis uh, combined correlative analysis of it uh, would be able to do so with cytomine so we are not there yet but today i would like to, to show you uh, where we are what we have already done in uh, extending cytomine for multimodal imaging data um, so that uh, you can see uh, what's coming uh, with, with cytomine i will uh, before going into the technical details about uh, why and how we develop uh, these features i would like to be sure that people know uh, what we are, we are talking about when we talk about multimodal and correlated multimodal imaging so here i just took um, a few examples of papers that uh, combine uh, different imaging modalities to get a better insight of the biological processes or um, pathology or um, or issues with uh, the, these pathologies and molecular processes and so here in this example uh, some people have combined mri with histopalectology imaging in this other example they combine x-ray first contrast tomography and also to, uh, histology and in this other example they combine uh, histology imaging with uh, proteomic um, maldi proteomic imaging to get a better idea of uh, uh, tumor uh, micro environment and tumor content uh, at the, the proteomic level from this other nice paper is a review of multiple modalities that can be used uh, uh, here in cell bio biology and so that means that many many uh, as you know uh, modalities can be acquired and combined to to better understand uh, the, the the processes uh, in uh, biological entities at different spatial, spectral, and temporal resolutions. So, from the point of view of uh, computer sci scientists uh, like us, um, an ideal correlative multimodal workflow would, would, would could be uh, somehow summarized in this way. So, you have different samples uh, going uh, that that have been. Uh, treated or uh, that have some uh, interesting uh, uh, features that you 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 put through a multimodal uh, imaging equipment like fluorescent imaging proteomic imaging or different microscopic uh, techniques and then what you want to have is data analysis tools that will allow you to combine this uh, the output of these uh, imaging uh, instruments and for this, you need a different type of techniques like visualization. So, of course, you want to visualize these images. You want sometimes to register these images so to overlap or combine uh, easily these, uh, these uh, different images. For each of these uh, 
modality, you, you probably want to have some kind of segmentation technique, or if you are uh, acquiring this uh, in a temporal uh, dimension, you want to have tracking uh, algorithm. And you might also have, want to have some classification tools that, for example, that allows you to classify different types of cells, etc. And so at the end, you want to combine these different data analysis tools to extract new knowledge, uh, such as new biomarkers that allows you to discriminate between the, the different categories of, of samples, or you want to uh, derive new relationship and classification rules uh, related to this sample, or you could also, one possible output is to have a new improved imaging modality or new algorithm that will better uh, classify or segment uh, your data. Um, so that makes a lot of uh, challenge for uh, computer scientists to design these tools and to make them uh, readily available. Actually, there exist already a, a plethora of image analysis tools. So if you go to uh, Bioimage Informatics Index or Papers with Code uh, website or other um, databases of tools, you, you know that there are plenty of uh, algorithm and tools there. And for example, for image registration, uh, a recent paper uh, claimed that there, there are literally, literally hundreds of different registration algorithm. And if you look what's happening in a, a very active field of research called visual proteomics, you also have plenty of tools that are currently developed. Uh, but each of these ones are somehow developed uh, independently and so at the end it's not easy both for a biological researcher or computer researcher to 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 know which of these tools uh, are, are useful so i believe uh, that relative multimodal imaging data analysis uh, current pipelines is are not ideal because uh, it's it's it raises uh, several challenges. So for biologists, as I said, it's not re easy uh, to reuse previous work on specific data for many reasons. Um, for example, uh, there are many nice biology papers uh, that do not come with a readily uh, usable tool. Or it's not easy to choose which tool uh, you can uh, use on your data because you don't know in advance which one will, will Will perform better or you are not aware of the existence of one of these tools. Some of the best algorithms developed by uh, computer scientists and AI developers are not always uh, implemented in user-friendly software. They come uh, with source code but it's not easy to reuse them uh, uh, for bio biological uh, researchers. Uh, and yeah, there are many other uh, challenges. I will not uh, read all of them, but uh, basically, I think there is a lack of multimodal software toolbox. And um, overall, there is also this pressure of publish or perish, which means that uh, a lot of work is lost after publication. We still do not have the 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 the, the habit to to share uh, all the data image analysis uh, pipelines and results uh, after publication from the point of view of computer scientists uh, i also think it's not uh, always easy to design generic methodologies and tools that could be used uh, in multiple uh, application because first if we consider a multimodal uh, uh, project there are many many possible imaging techniques and combination and the, the algorithm and the tools that we develop might not be suited for um, these different techniques there are also a few uh, multimodal uh, data sets available and more importantly uh, most of these multimodal data sets are not annotated so they come only with images and metadata but no additional information that are, however, required uh, by computer scientists to, for example, build uh, deep learning models. You need what we call ground true or annotation to, for example, build a segmentation algorithm or um, a registration algorithm. You need uh, specific uh, landmarks or annotation on these images, and they are often lacking because um, for example, of the lack of tools that allows to share these uh, So overall, I think that uh, 
we are still uh, following some suboptimal uh, science practice and we would like as computer scientists we would like to develop tools that uh, improve this uh, this situation so can we solve this uh, these issues by tomorrow no of course but our proposal is to to go towards this uh, sharing everything uh, philosophical principle uh, that we believe might contribute to better collaborate and to produce more generic and reproducible tools and algorithms. So basically what we want to do is to provide tools to be able to share images, including raw data, but also metadata, of course, to share annotations, um, but also to share a version of the source code so that it's easy for someone to reuse a, a specific version of an image analysis workflow. And we want to be able to share uh, quantitative results over the, the web. So the idea is to develop a tool that would allow this kind of um, uh, collaboration environment where you have multiple people working remotely uh, with some of them um, being uh, the guys who acquire the images, other people uh, annotating these images remotely and then uh, some computer scientists uh, accessing this data uh, through the, the web, uh, exploiting these images and annotation to build uh, uh, image analysis uh, models, and then to publish these image analysis uh, tools so that the end user can uh, use them and maybe execute them on uh, um, effective uh, computing uh, resources. So that's really the, the ideal uh, way of working, in my opinion, to have this kind of uh, remote uh, multidisciplinary uh, collaboration. And for this, we propose, uh, we started to, to develop Cytomine, uh, as I said, in 2010. And Cytomine software uh, actually enables this kind of collaboration uh, workflows through the web because it allows to share images, annotation, algorithms and uh, image quantification results. So here you see a typical uh, workflow um, um, when using Cytomine. So after installing a Cytomine server in your own institute, um, it's something I want to, 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 to stress out that Cytomine, you can install it by yourself in your own institute. It's not only a web server in the cloud that you have to access remotely, you can have your own uh, installation and open it to your own collaborator and collaborate through the web only with your own collaborators uh, and administrate your own server. So, so after installing this uh, uh, Cytomine server, you can start uploading data like uh, wall slide imaging or other, other type of data. I will uh, give you more details about that. And once you um, uploaded this data, you, you can make them available on the web. Uh, using a web browser, people can um, access these images. And uh, you can configure which of your collaborators have access to which of your images. And these uh, collaborators can start annotating these images. For example, drawing region of interest manually first, uh, corresponding to interesting biological uh, uh, tissues or cells. And then using this uh, annotation, you can basically work like that to collaborate uh, and share annotation over the web and discuss about these uh, images and annotation uh, through the web. But you can also execute some machine learning or deep learning algorithms that will exploit these annotations. For example, in this typical example of tumor detection, you can train an algorithm using a tumor annotation that, was, that were per, uh, manually um, uh, performed by experts and non-tumor annotation, and then build a machine learning or deep learning models that will then, uh, you can then uh, make available uh, in the web interface and execute it so that the end user can visualize the prediction of these algorithms, which try to mimic the contouring of uh, tumors in these uh, images. And if the algorithm, uh, which still quite uh, happens uh, often, uh, is not correct, 
we provide some uh, proofreading user interface that allows the end user to to correct this prediction so that at the end he or she has the, the final uh, two more contouring that uh, he or she uh, wanted and uh, can export the statistics about, for example, the size of these tumors in the in the samples. So that's a, a typical uh, way of using Cytomine, but you, you could imagine other workflows. And for example, Cytomine is also used in education settings. So where this machine learning part is, is not really used, but the sharing of images and annotation is used by teachers to uh, make the student learn about histology and pathology, etc. So, uh, uh, Cytomine, as I said, is open source and uh, can be installed. It uh, can be installed by yourself. And uh, now I will go a little a bit more into um, description of the main feature of Cytomine, and I will try to switch uh, if the Wi-Fi connection is, is with me uh, between this presentation and uh, an, a live demo of the features. So when you install a Cytomine, you can then create a project. And one project could, for example, correspond to one experimental study or to one course in the education setting. And for each of these projects, you can uh, uh, make it accessible uh, to users and, and give them different roles uh, that uh, correspond to uh, if they can only visualize these images or if they can also edit these images and annotation. So here you have a list of different projects. Uh, and so each line here corresponds to a project and you have here an overview of the available images uh, in this project. So for example, is if I open this uh, demonstration project, I see a few images uh, that have been uh, uploaded to, to this project. So this is the notion of, of project inside the mine. And then you put images in this project and to, to, to be able to, to deal with uh, multimodal uh, images and uh, various image format, we have in my uh, lab uh, at the university, we have completely uh, redesigned uh, for one or two years now uh, the, the, the core uh, image management system, which we now call PIMS. It's completely written in Python and it supports various formats in a very flexible way because it's in our architecture when you can plug plugins and each of these plugins can have its own library to read the image data, to read the metadata, to, to convert or process the, the basic uh, image data. And so, for example, now we have a like, Cytomine server that has both a combination of open slide to read uh, the digital pathology format. But then if you upload a, a microscopy uh, image format, uh, we might use bioformat. But if you are using a specific uh, Digom format for uh, wall slide, then we use another library, etc. So it's a very flexible uh, architecture uh, that we are still developing. And we met uh, very recently in collaboration with Comilis uh, Partners Development to support uh, multiple uh, microscopy uh, format. And so, for example, here you have the, the typical example of a digital uh, pathology uh, image. And you can zoom in and zoom out. And so here I'm zooming in and zooming out in this image through the Wi-Fi connection. I'm connected to a, a research server uh, in my institute and I'm connected from my home uh, for now. And so you see that it's quite fast uh, to visualize these large images. This image I think is uh, yeah, about mostly 40,000 uh, uh, pixels by uh, 30,000 pixels. Um, with with uh, this Python imaging uh, management system, we, we completely redesigned the way we are uh, accessing the tiles of the images and the way we are displaying and processing them. And that development was done to actually support uh, images like fluorescent imaging, etc. Because with this new architecture, it's possible to 
actually access the raw data, but also to process it on the fly so that you can apply some uh, min max stretching or uh, histogram adjustment or uh, gamma, etc. but also color mapping, which then allows to, uh, to overlay uh, uh, fluorescent channels in images or also to overlay, uh, for example, it's a recent development where we try to display the result of some uh, prediction algorithm in terms of heat map. And so that's this architecture that we, we use to do so. And so, for example, if I click here, I have access to, to one tile. But if I click on this one, it's the same tile, but with some uh, uh, min-max stretching uh, that, that, that we are applying on the fly. And so with this development, we were recently able to support multiple uh, format like uh, like a format coming from Nikon or Leica or um, Zeiss equipment. So for example, if I open uh, this one here, so we have one image here and I can uh, select the channels here or uh, merge these channels. So selectively select one of, of these channels and for each of these you can uh, apply some uh, uh, operation on the, the, uh, the histograms, etc. So that's the same if I open this one, it's uh, an image with, uh, I think, a large number of uh, Z stacks. And so you can visualize these images. There are about uh, several hundreds of uh, Z stack in this image. And same for the, the other image here. It's, an, I think, an electron microscopy image. Uh, okay. And then here, uh, another one, but I will not show all of them, of course, but just to, to let you know that Cytomine is able to read many formats thanks to the, the use of bioformats and other libraries. And we, we are also uh, currently um, extending the image management system to support uh, image with a very large number of temporal points or, or a very large number of, of, of spectral uh, dimensions. For example, uh, uh, in MALDI imaging, uh, here I open this, this image, oops, which actually has about, uh, I think, uh, yeah, 12,000 spectral dimension. So it's a, a small image in terms of uh, X and Y uh, dimension, but it, in terms of spectral dimension, it has more than uh, 12,000 uh, dimensions. So to, to be able to read this kind of images, we had to uh, recently redesign the data structure that we are using. And for this other example, it's a uh, special proteomics data set with Akoya, uh, technique and so here also the number of uh, channels is quite important and so we have to to redesign the way we, we process and visualize uh, these images okay so other formats are uh, currently being investigated and uh, we are developing uh, modules and plugins uh, to support them like uh, hyperspectral uh, CZI or uh, other type of spatial omics data so in addition to visualize, uh, visualizing one single image, we, we have designed a side-by-side -side web viewer that allows you to combine uh, uh, multiple images uh, in, uh, in one window. So here we have uh, one image acquired uh, using a specific fluorescent technique. Here we have uh, MLD uh, imaging data and there uh, another uh, image, etc. So you can have this side by side uh, viewer to look at your uh, sample uh, using the different uh, modality techniques. For the moment, we do not have yet automatic registration. So that, that's a, a bit of pity, but we are not image registration uh, experts. But Thanks to some project we are involved in, like Big Picture Project and Cornelis, we, we, we will plan, we will uh, 
we are planning to, to have the different kind of registration tools. So Cytomine is, of course, not only about uh, visualization, but also about annotation. So what we call an annotation in Cytomine is this kind of color, the region of interest that you can first draw uh, manually and to which you, you can associate uh, different information. So I will open the, this uh, image, okay. So you see here, uh, this annotation, that they were actually done by uh, one uh, biological expert. And you can activate or deactivate the layers of annotation. Uh, and this uh, uh, annotation, as I said, it can, can be associated to different kinds of information. And one of the most important information in, in our opinion is what we call terms from an ontology. So that means that you can, uh, for example, say, okay, this, this region of interest is a specific uh, type of tumor. Uh, this type, this region of interest is uh, a bronchus uh, and other ones are inflammatory cells, etc. So you can, uh, on the cytomine website, define an ontology. So here I'm opening uh, the ontology editor. So you have the list of terms that correspond to different uh, tissue types or cell types, and you can add a new term or uh, rename or edit the terms, associate colors, etc. And so the user can um, annotate their images in a kind of standardized way. Uh, each project manager can define the ontology, and then the user can start annotating them uh, using a, a common vocabulary. So here you see the different uh, tools that uh, I think I, I uh, described. So the terms from the ontology here, the annotation layers, so you have multiple users and you can activate, deactivate. You can allow other users to see your own annotation layer or you can disable it. Of course, in a collaborative project, you want to, to share uh, them, so you, you activate them. And when you select an annotation, you can see different kind of information and you can in addition to this term you can also associate some properties which are key value pairs so it's really a, a rich way to annotate these images you can have a lot of information uh, in, you can put a lot of information uh, on, on the site of my platform and what we have recently developed to to ease the annotation of multimodal data set is to it's the notion of image group. So the idea is that you, you want to acquire images with different equipment, uh, but you want to somehow link these images because they are, uh, although they were acquired by different instruments, they are linked to uh, the same sample. And so it's what we call an image group that corresponds to a list of images describing, for example, the same sample. So on the platform, you, you you have this uh, image group you can create new image group and say okay uh, i want in my uh, image group uh, uh, associate these uh, these images so here we have an example of one image group with uh, a few uh, images fluorescent imaging mild imaging etc and once you have created an image group you can then visualize this image group with the side by side viewer and you can start annotating uh, the one modality and then somehow copy past uh, this annotation in the multiple uh, modalities. So for now, uh, it's still a, a semi-manual procedure. Uh, we were working on the automated uh, translation of annotation from one, one modality to another, but it's not yet working well. So it's not a feature that is available, but what is available is a kind of smart copy paste. You select an annotation in one modality and then you, you copy it and paste it in another modality and there is an automatic resizing of it uh, uh, by using the, the spatial resolution uh, of the two images. Uh, there is an adjustment of the, the size of it. Uh, and what you can do then is to link this annotation and I will show you uh, this feature on this uh, image. It's a public data set. 
So for example, here I'm uh, in this image where you see this uh, annotation on top of uh, an image region. And what you can do is to, once you have linked it, is to, to jump into the corresponding annotation in the other uh, modality. So here it's an example on uh, immunohistochemistry images, but you can imagine uh, the same thing uh, with different modalities. So you can, uh, if I click here, it will jump automatically in the uh, different uh, images at the right position because these, these annotations were linked using uh, what we call a uh, annotation link. So you have the tools on top here that allows you to draw these annotation and then to, to say, okay, these annotation are, are linked in the different modalities. So what I show up to now is uh, features mostly in the web user interface. But actually, uh, it's not the only way to interact with a cytomine server. So you can interact with it through the web browser like Google Chrome, uh, etc. But you can also interact with it through an API and, 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 and then use external script or external application to, to import uh, and export all the data. And for this, we are using uh, an HTTP uh, REST API which is uh, documented uh, on our documentation website. So that, for example, you can extract uh, annotation or uh, other kind of information. So for example, here I have an URL uh, which corresponds to, which contains the identifier of an annotation and I want to, to have access to the uh, rect rectangular region around this annotation. So here, I, I have this URL that has uh, the annotation ID, and then I ask the crop uh, of it. But I can also uh, ask the, the mask uh, just by putting this uh, additional parameter mask equals true uh, in the URL. And so it's very nice for a data scientists to, to have this API because it allows them to extract uh, all the uh, annotation that were done by the experts and then train uh, machine learning or deep learning models. So that's the same for all the, the, the data in Cytomine. You can extract the list of users, the list of, of, image, of images in a project, the list of annotation that has been performed uh, by this user or the list of annotation uh, to which uh, the term uh, tumor, for example, has, uh, has been associated, etc. You can filter all the data, filter all the annotation to, to have the good training set to, to build your models. You can, as I showed you before, these uh, image group and annotation links, you can extract the list of annotation in an, uh, in an image group, etc. Or you can um, interact with the Python image management system to apply some maximum projection to a specific region in an image. Uh, and so you can do this both through the, directly through the API or through the Python client and Java client that we are providing, which has function, for example, to apply this uh, maximum projection. And behind this function, actually, it's a Python code that interacts with the, the REST API. So going further uh, into the extensibility of uh, Cytomine, we uh, we have designed this concept of apps, which are external uh, code that you can run directly from the web user interface, provided that you respect some uh, kind of uh, programming principle. And so the, the, the main uh, principle that you have to follow is to describe your app using a, what we call a descriptor. It's a, a file that describes, okay, my app is um, uh, waiting for this kind of input parameters. Uh, so you describe each input parameters in terms of name, of uh, type of value, is it an integer, uh, float, etc., default values, etc. Then you, you have to describe what are the uh, required libraries uh, of your um, for to run your algorithm. So, for example, if you need to, if it's uh, an ImageJ workflow, uh, of course you need to. Uh, states that you need uh, an ImageJ uh, version, uh, a specific version, etc. And then you have a little uh, Python code that will uh, get the, 
de, de, the parameters from the Cytomine user interface and execute the, the, the line of the, the, the code that you want to run. So for example, uh, if you want to run an IC protocol, uh, you have to, to run uh, IC in headless mode and then uh, specify, uh, call the specific um, uh, protocol uh, that you want to run. So with this um, architecture uh, that is uh, container-based architecture, uh, we provide a way to run directly on the web user interface uh, algorithm that has been developed in uh, many different languages or using many different uh, existing tools like uh, ImageJ, Fiji, IC, Cell Profiler, Elastic, or uh, deep learning libraries such as Keras, TensorFlow, etc. And what is also nice is that all this is uh, stored in the Cytomine database. So when you run an algorithm, we actually save the parameters values of this algorithm into the database so that you can exactly know uh, what were the parameters values that were used to, 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 to obtain uh, these results. And going further, all these um, workflows that we integrate are versions so you can have access to the very specific version uh, of the code that was run so for example um, yeah here you have the list of some uh, algorithms that are on the cytomine platform uh, you have a version here and you can uh, see the source code uh, directly on github with the specific version uh, specific release version on github so once you have described your, your uh, app uh, using this descriptor, uh, it's actually what will be used by Cytomine web user interface to automatically generate this uh, user dialogue. And so you can run your algorithm uh, directly on the web interface and specify the parameters values, uh, provided that you have described them in, in the descriptor. And so Cytomine comes with uh, various applications. Uh, it's an example of uh, ROI detection in uh, hyperspectral image. Um, but we have here, for example, uh, a Stardist uh, algorithm that, that was executed. Uh, and so you can here uh, display the, on top of the, the image the, the the annotation that were generated by uh, Stardist. And for this, uh, we just had to, to launch this algorithm here. You select uh, a specific version of the algorithm. You say, okay, I want to apply the algorithm on this image. I want to apply it on, on this type of region of interest. Here you have the default values of it that were described in the descriptor and then you launch it. Maybe I will not wait for it, but uh, it's this run was uh, done uh, one, one, one hour ago. And so you have here access to the annotation that were generated by this uh, Stardis algorithm using uh, these specific parameter values. So we have several applications. Uh, you can have a look on GitHub, uh, both in our repository or in the new bias uh, repository because uh, during the new bias cost action, we have uh, developed uh, an extended cytomine and installed a specific uh, instance of cytomine, which is called Biaflows, which is a, a, um, a benchmarking platform. So you can publicly have access to it. Uh, it's biaflows.newbias.org. And you can uh, see uh, there uh, multiple algorithms that have been run on uh, data sets and you can compare um, with metrics the, the result of these data sets. So if I show you very quickly. Um, okay. Oops. Oops. There's a bug here. Okay, maybe I will not be able to show it to you. No, it's okay. Okay, so here I'm on the Bioflows server and I uh, can open an image. Here you see the ground true. Uh, and then I can select, for example, the uh, cell pose algorithm. And then you can compare with another one. Uh, let's say. Uh, Unit or elastic algorithm, okay, and so you can you can uh, 
you can compare the result of different uh, workflows visually and then uh, with this uh, bias loss platform you also have access to uh, metrics here uh, like uh, dice coefficient etc and you can compare these metrics for the old images of your project or uh, detailed results for each of the image okay so we did this uh, this bias loss platform uh, which is uh, freely available and to conclude this talk, I want to quickly go over some recent machine learning research that we did in our uh, uh, group, because originally we are a machine learning group. So we have recently uh, developed tools, uh, an algorithm to uh, segment uh, some specific tissue types in a zebrafish uh, project. And so for this, we also uh, provide an acetamine application so that you can reuse it. We are working on self-training uh, techniques to relieve labeling efforts. So the idea is that once you have this type of images, uh, you probably don't want to ask experts to precisely annotate everything. So the idea of this technique is to only rely on a few annotations and then it will somehow auto-complete the annotation. So that's something that we are working on. It's an auto-complete or self-training algorithm to reduce the, 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 the work on, uh, on, on man, a manual annotation. We have worked on uh, landmark uh, base detection uh, in, uh, in multiple uh, bioimaging studies uh, using uh, machine learning or deep learning techniques. And uh, we also started to work with uh, MALDI uh, proteomic data, where the idea is to identify ions that discriminate uh, different Tissue region in images. So here it's a toy data set to illustrate that you, you, you can directly on the annotated region of interest and then extract, uh, as I explained with the API, this uh, region of interest and then compute some uh, statistics to identify the ions that discriminate uh, this region of interest. And to uh, finally show you an example in, uh, in collaboration with Comilis. Uh, the idea is here is to acquire uh, multiple image, image with multiple equipment like fluorescent imaging, uh, electron microscopy, proteomic MALDI imaging, etc. And to identify in some specific sample, I cannot give you uh, too much detail because it's still ongoing and not published. But the idea is to have a workflow to help biologists to identify which of the features, which of the imaging modality is helpful to discriminate between different regions of interest. And so the idea is we have this kind of workflow where the people annotate some region of interest in a high resolution image. Then we translate this annotation into uh, other modality and uh, perform some uh, template matching to match this annotation with the original raw data which is then put uh, into a random forest-like uh, algorithm to identify which of the features are discriminative between these um, two types of uh, uh, tissue in, in the samples. So uh, cytomine is uh, fully documented. Uh, at least we try to do our best. Uh, and so you can have access to the documentation both for uh, end user, if you want to use the web user interface, but also for administrator administrator or core facility manager if you want to install it we, we have the procedure described here and for data scientists we also explain this concept of apps and how to plug your own algorithm and we also describe the, the api so to summarize uh, i wanted to present you cytomine which is a generic tool for sharing everything uh, related to um, images, uh, so raw data, metadata, ground true annotation, image analysis, source code, and quantitative results uh, through the web. You can install Cytomine in your own institute and start uh, collaborative uh, research uh, today. And I showed you some recent development for uh, multimodal annotation and analysis. Of course, we are, we are not uh, there yet, and we want to work in the coming months and years uh, on improving the internal data structure of Cytomine to support uh, bigger and bigger data sets with 
thousands of uh, dimensions and millions of objects. We want to also work on deep learning to ease annotation and relieve the annotation work of experts. And uh, we plan to also ease uh, the integration of multimodal uh, registration, fusion, and data mining algorithm. And so we are extending our uh, soft app execution architecture to, to support that. And to finally, uh, we hope to have this nice platform, uh, multimodal platform uh, for uh, biological research. I would like to acknowledge my colleagues, uh, both at the university, the, the, the cooperative company, um, and also to people from Communist and Nebias Network who actively uh, help us to improve the future of site domain. We are supported by various uh, funding sources since 2010, and we are often interested to have new projects to continue uh, the development of this open source software. And if you want to contact us, you have here Twitter, GitHub, uh, and documentation, um, and we are also trying to do our best to uh, reply on the uh, image SC, uh, forum. We still have to improve, but I think we, we are uh, doing our best. And if you want additional information, especially about how to design apps and plug them and integrate them in Cytomine, we have two no bias uh, webinars that are available. And I don't know if uh, Dror plan to tell something about this, but there is a communist conference in September in Cyprus about correlated multimodal imaging in uh, life science. And it's, I think it's still time to register and submit a poster to it. So that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention.